Alabama uh, Democrat Doug Jones is with us right now. Uh, he has been calling for Mark Judge. This is uh, the friend, the high school friend of Brett Kavanaugh to testify as well if it comes to that. Senator, very good to have you. Thanks for taking the time. My pleasure, Neil. Thanks for having me. Uh, how likely do you think that is? Well, I don't know, but I mean, look, there is uh, certainly a history in all of the judicial committees uh, or Senate committees and House committees that if you have reluctant witnesses, uh, you issue a subpoena for them. I mean, that's routine. Uh, and as I said before, clearly his, uh, his refusal to come and stating why will be entered in the record, but that needs to be tested. As of right now, there are only three witnesses to this alleged incident, and one of them says he's just not going to come. Well, if we're going to have a public hearing, make him come, make him be subject to cross-examination and let's see how that goes but that's the only way you can have a full and fair investigation and hearing what kind of reaction have you gotten from republicans that discuss this for example uh, with chuck grassley any any republicans at all no, you know, we went out of session yesterday, so a lot of this is just playing out, and so I have not had that. I am hoping that there are still discussions. You know, we this needs to be taken out of the political world. This is, an, this is supposed to be an independent judiciary and a nomination that is not supposed to be as tribal as this has now become. We need to kind of just take a step back, let this play out, let the FBI do an investigation. Uh, the president, I heard him again to say today, to say that the, the FBI shouldn't do that. They do this. They do it all the time and it would not take long uh, to get this investigation done to hear the uh, witnesses hopefully publicly but if not let's at least get it uh, behind closed doors but get them all under oath uh, senator if, if republicans go along with their plan to have this monday hearing with or without uh, dr ford now there have been a, a, a efforts we're told and outreaches to, to speak with her uh even away from the glare of cameras uh at our california home whatever uh, but they, the Republicans are adamant about continuing the hearing as planned, continuing a vote within committee on, on the judge's nomination and a full Senate vote. Would you participate in all of that? Well, when you say participate, I'm not a member of the committee. If I'm called on the vote, well, it's in the I'm, full I will, Senate. I mean, in the full Senate. Yeah, no. I mean, if I'm called on the vote, I'm not going to just give a protest uh, abs abstention. I'm not going to do that. That's my my role as a as a senator is not to do things like that. Okay, so I, I just want to be clear because some of your colleagues that has been bandied about that they would have a protest no show. Well, and, and that is certainly their uh, prerogative. It is not the position I would take personally. Uh, but at the same time, I do think it would be incredibly unfortunate to go forward with this nomination on the floor, even in the committee, without having the ability to talk to Dr. Ford. She, her life has been upended. You mentioned maybe doing something at her home. They can't do that because she's had to move out of her home right now. We need to, we need to let this rest. We need to make sure we get the FBI to do that. You can't can't have a full committee hearing that is uh, without getting more facts. If we're just going to be a, uh, her statement without being tested ahead of time or looking at the facts and Judge Kavanaugh's, that hearing could devolve into just nothing but uh, theatrics. Hasn't it we already, need to, though, Senator? Do you ever worry that the same sentiment and respect might not be shown to the judge? That, that this is unfair to him, and and that uh, this letter from this woman. Uh, that dates back to the summer. Uh, Dine Feinstein had in her hands, didn't do anything with it. Now, there are a lot of reasons back and forth on that. But do you think Democrats on that committee, I know you're not on that committee, handle this fairly? No, I, I th look, I think that we have to be fair to Judge Kavanaugh. We have to be fair to Dr. Ford. I've said that from the very beginning, Neil, but the only way to be fair to everyone is to let the FBI get engaged in this, to look at the facts. That's what they're trained to do, and they do it all the time. So that way, when the, when the Senate does convene and the Judiciary Committee convenes, they're going to have more than just a statement and a denial. And then that way, they can do things appropriately. I'd like to see both sides of the aisle, just tamper down the theatrics. And, and right now, the problem we've got is that we seem to have colleagues on one side of the aisle that push this through, colleagues on the other side saying we need to, need to wait. Unfortunately, it looks like people have already made up their minds, and I don't think that that's appropriate. I think yeah, we need to let the investigation. I know you're trying to be very even-handed about no. it, sir, but I mean, the president just wonders about the timing of all of this. You heard what he had to say before he went down to North Carolina. That sure. he doesn't think this process is being fair or that Democrats on the committee, particularly Ms. Feinstein, who he said had this letter in her hands, didn't do anything about it, suddenly, lo and behold, did. 
that he's angry. So Republicans I are locked into their position, as you said, Democrats locked into to their position. And I don't know if a single vote changes as a result. You may be correct about that, but the fact is we are where we are. I have said from the very beginning that I have been concerned about this process. You know, Chairman Grassley uh, asked for hundreds of thousands of documents that he said back in the summer were appropriate to get to review prior to a nomination being considered by the committee. Those documents have not all been turned over. They can't be turned over until October. So there's a, there's a fundamental unfairness to both parties and uh, that has been been ongoing, and, and whether or not this could have been done earlier is really beside the point at this stage of the proceedings. What we have to do is play the hand with that we're dealt now. The hand we're dealt now is to be fair to both parties, to be fair to Judge Kavanaugh, to be fair to Ms. Ford, and let's go forward. Let's just see what we can get with an investigation. Neil, it would not take long. Nobody's saying to put this back to the, to the end of the year or to the first of next year. It would not take long for a very efficient and FBI to update a background check based on what they've heard right now, let the committee review that, and then have this hearing as they see fit. Senator, your pickup was one of the more historic ones for Democrats when you won in as red as you can get Alabama. Now there are signs that uh, some potential flips are, are in the works that could send the Senate Democrat, and hence the rush on the part of Republicans, we are told, to try to get this nomination secured. Uh, before any of that happens. What do you think of that? Well, I think we should. That's exactly what I was talking about, the problem with people talking about this in a political context. This is a Supreme Court nomination, Neil. This is not a political game. We have seen well, millions of dollars. Would no, no, no. Nowhere, let me, right? let me, Sir, let me, it wouldn't go let me, anywhere with a Democratic Senate, right? No, I, I disagree with that. Okay. I, I completely disagree with that. We have two years left on this administration. I disagree with that. What might happen to happen, have to happen is the president actually talked to the Senate and it is advised and consent type role that we have to actually get some advice before doing that and not seeking uh, advice from other uh, other interest groups that we have here. I think that we've got to take the political ramp out of this. This has been the problem. We are in a bad state in this country when the independent Supreme Court nomination like this has turned into a political campaign and it's a Republican versus Democrat issue. That should not be. It's not always been that way and we should get try to figure out how to get back to the Senate's constitutional role here. I know that that sounds Pollyannish, but it's really important that we try to do that. Sir, you've been very patient, and my crew has too, because they say, keep going along, Caputo, shut up. But if you, I can ask you this. This concerns behavior of two people in high school. Um, if, if, if it merits the attention it's getting, I'm not saying it should or shouldn't, is that a new, is that a new precedent that worries you that we're going back further than we normally would in these sort of background checks. You know, Neil, I, I think that everybody is going to judge this on its own. You know, if what happened, if what Dr. Ford said happened is true, that is some very serious criminal behavior. And if you couple that with continued denials, people are going to have to make their, uh, their own assessments on a case-by-case -case basis. But let me say this. We are talking about a lifetime uh, appointment to the United States Supreme Court. I think the bar needs to be pretty high for those nominations. Senator, thank you very much. Belated congratulations again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Neil. Appreciate it.